Hello everyone. So today we are going to check how to do the IRCC web form. Since I've got a uh, request on based on how to do web form in case you forgot a file, in case you forgot to add a file, or in case you need to make some changes to your request or make some changes to your files and everything, or if you want to report any new additional details to IRCC, or in case you want to give some more information, you want to change your address or phone number or something like that, then this is the fastest way or direct way to inform IRCC regarding your changes. So basically you can um, ask about your applications through the IRCC web form or ask a general question about the program or service of IRCC or to get new or to give new information about your applications or if you want to change your contact information like address or phone number this is the best way or if you want to change or if you want to add change or remove your personality or an agent of yours then this is another way to uh, do it and or if you're facing technical problems you're unable to upload something you're unable to submit a request or something like that some technical problems take a screen take a screenshot and attach it to the web form and you can inform them uh, like that or if you want to even if you want to give a compliment comment or a complaint or a feedback or something this is the uh, space to do that and you always need to keep a uci, UCI number uh, or a client id number uh, for the purpose of um, raising a web form because they will be looking at the, at the application of yours based on that if you don't have one then, then just keep the uh, space blank so that is enough and more and basically the irc web form is an online service that gives you a fast access to the canadian immigration department or cac so some of the main uses of this web form is to use in case you're, you had a marriage or a divorce or any common law arrangements which happened or a birth of a new child or dependent or something like that. Or in case you want to raise a web form for your visa visa to know the status or to uh, submit additional supporting documents, then this is a platform to do that. It can also be done uh, used by uh, work permit, uh, open work permit holders or applicants or even for spouse and open work permit usage. You can always use this to check the status or submit additional documents, change of address or changes in the profile. It can also be used for uh, used by permanent resident holders or for PR card purpose and all those things. It can also be used for change of address or say in case of some change in circumstances, you are um, getting a new job, you're losing a, new, uh, using a, losing a job or lost a child or dependent on a spouse or any, any circumstances in your family or any information which is relevant to your visa or your stay. This is a platform which you need to inform them about. And if you want to sponsor a dependent or a qualifying family member to Canada, the interest to sponsor web form is recommended. And should provide all identity information of the sponsor and the sponsored while submitting this form. Also, uh, most of the people use this to uh, inquire about the application status. And it's always advisable to raise one web form in what one month, maybe. So if you're not getting a response back in, say, a month, raise another one. So let's check how exactly can we use the web form and how exactly do we need to fill it and what all the information we need to give and all those things. So let's go ahead and um, click on the link which I copy pasted below, uh, which will lead if you're um, applying from outside Canada, definitely this is the link. The first link is the link which you need to go to and you need to click on uh, tell us more on the bottom line, which states have you submitted an application for permanent residence, student, visitor or worker. So you can choose from that yes or no. So and the next question will be is your application being processed by an outside office outside Canada. Then if it's yes, click on the option which you think it's right, your, where exactly your application form is right now, based on that, you click on that. And if you're from inside Canada, I would say, uh, click on no. Otherwise, one option is I'll copy paste a link at the bottom, which goes for the people who are applying from inside Canada. So you can click on the sec second link and you can directly go there. Once you're there, you will see all the information, which they say is you can use this form for uh, such and such uses. Say you have submitted an application or profile and it has exit normal processing time, so you want to know the status and extra 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 all the details and don't forget to use the representative form imm 5476 if you are not applying for yourself and if you're applying for someone else and make sure that both the people sign on the representative form and other to release personal information on a designated individual imm 54754 form so in both the forms you need both signatures so uh signed uh, by the applicant as well as the person whose uh, records are getting uh, being retrieved so both the people need to sign it and mention the reason for urgency also in a letter so that will help you out a lot so if you are facing a difficulty in between that you're unable to uh, do raise a web form or if you're unable to raise an application properly due to technical difficulties, then uh, you know that there is, you need to mention uh, what type of application you have um, raised and select the technical difficulty as the application or inquiry type and approximate date the application was submitted and the complete address of yours with the UCI number or client ID number. And if there's any reference number, unique uh, online application reference number, please keep that also and the screenshots of the error which you have faced. So once you fill all those things, let's go to filling up the forms here. So we'll go to the inquiry part where we will select from here with ETA, technical difficulties, change of contact information, extra, 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 whichever one suits you best, select it appropriately. So here I was thinking of doing uh, a temporary residence 
um, additional document submission. So let's go to temporary residence, apply it online. So I'll click on that. And then the next is the type of application or inquiry. So let's select one of these, whichever one is applicable for you. Select that. If it's not applicable to you, we won't select that. We'll go to the previous option. We'll change whichever uh, type of application we are raising. So based on that, we'll do that. So once you select the temporary applied online work permit, which I'm selecting over here, then we need to give some, some details to them. What exactly we are looking for, whether we are submitting an additional request, whether we are seeking the status of our document or our application, or if you want to change any address or phone number or something like that, or if I want to change my agent from uh, from uh, handling the, my application, or if you want to inform them about any uh, going on circumstances, this is the place we need to uh, raise a request. So we need to fill out this inquiry with uh, a briefly uh, below 1500 characters. But that should be to the point, you, we should not beat around the bush. So we'll just uh, fill up the details crisp and clear to them. And so they will clearly understand what exactly we want instead of they guessing it. Once we fill up the whole application, then we'll go to the applicant information where this, uh, we'll mention uh, family name, which is the last name. Say I've mentioned before, uh, if your name is Madhav Kumar, then Kumar is your last name, which is your family name and first name or given name is mother. So in this case, I've mentioned the family name and then the given name, the first name, and then the email address of the applicant and the date of birth of the applicant and the country of birth of the applicant, which are quite basic. So we'll just go ahead and fill it. Then we'll go, we'll come to the client ID number, USA number, which if you're already holding a work permit or a study permit or any, uh, you had an interaction with um, IRCC before, definitely you will get a UCI number or unique client, uh, client identity number will be there. You can you need to use that number over here. You need to type in that number. If you don't have one, then just leave it as it is. Just leave it blank. Then we'll go to the application number, which usually for workers, it starts with W. For study permit, it starts with U. So for different cases, it's different number, which usually on the top right corner, you'll be able to find it. Then we'll go ahead and fill up the telephone number or the mobile number, whichever apt, whichever is apt for you. Uh, if you're from outside Canada, please mention the mobile number as, uh, with the STD code and all those details. Then we'll just come down to the relationship uh, to applicant. So if you're an applicant, click on applicant. If you're a representative, a sponsor, click on those along with the information, which uh, the, the form numbers, which I've uh, told before, 5744 form, um, to uh, authorize you to raise a request on their behalf to act as an agent sort of thing. So uh, you, you submit that form also along at the end. And also the form uh, to get the information uh, of, of the applicant on behalf of them. So both those forms should be raised and it should be signed by both the parties and it should be uploaded at the end. Then we'll come down and then we'll mention that the person who is uh, submitting these details, that person's details should be mentioned at the end, which uh, the family name again, um, I'm selecting applicant itself as the person who is applying for it. So I'm mentioning the same last name and first name and the email address and the mobile number. And if your case is being handled by a, 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 a regulated Canadian immigrant consultant, then please enter their member number. They'll have a member number with them. So they mentioned their member number also over there. Now we'll just go and check the consent and disclaimer, go through everything and know that they uh, know about their privacy policies and everything. Once you're totally fine then click on, I agree with the consent and disclaimer, then click next. Then let's go. It will mention case specific inquiry where it asks, would you like to include a document with your submission? Please select yes. And always upload the files, upload the, upload a letter, definitely uh, mentioning why, why exactly you're raising this. So the previous field just was not enough. So you need to raise, uh, you need to write a letter uh, mentioning how it is urgent for you, why it is, why exactly it is urgent for you so that it will not go unnoticed. So keep that letter in a professional and good way, uh, crisp and clear. Also uh, any forms, if you're uh, raising a self or a sponsor, upload those forms or an ID card or anything, all those things which verifies that you are you or the person, uh, the, if you're a authorized representative or someone, then uh, to prove that, upload your ID card and all those things. So once you upload all the documents properly and uh, perfectly, then you are good to go and click on submit. Also make sure that it's below 2 MB. Also in case uh, if you need, if you are raising this work form to upload more documents or to give more details or to give more information, please upload the documents related to that also in the upload section. So once you're done, once you're completely fine, just go through that a little bit more. Just make sure that everything is fine. Make, uh, I mean, let another, I, another pair of I also check the application or this web form. To make sure that everything's proper and it won't go unnoticed and everything is well and good. Once you are totally confident, click on submit and that's it. You'll be done with the web form. And once the IRCC received uh, your request or the information which you're providing or the documents which you're submitting extra, they will usually reply back uh, within two to five business days. If not, they might take another 30 days to inform you that they have received your documents and everything. So if you are not getting any, any information from uh, them uh, within 30 days and if it's too much of an urgent matter and if it really matters to you a lot if it's if it's really 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 urgent or important then i would say order a gcms note to know where exactly your application stands or whether they have received the web form or something 
also raise another web form stating the same the whatever happened previously and also mention that you have raised a web form before to know the details and everything so that they will be aware that you are raising this for the second time also the gcms node which you are raising will be helping you out to know whether they have actually received uh, your uh, rep, uh, your web form which you have raised before so uh, hopefully this will help you out for your journey to canada so all the best to you and thank you so much and please subscribe like and share and hopefully this video helped you thank you so much take care